Hello, is this working? Oh, that's booming. Hi. Uh, all right, I'll try to power through this a little bit here. Um, so thank you. Uh, this is how do we handle errors. Um, I lost my cursor already. Sorry, this was very painful to get working. I'm trying Google Slides for the first time. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, thank you for coming out. Thanks to Wilfred for organizing and responding to my Slack messages after I have well, long time lurker, no time messenger. Uh, my name is Mike Calhoun. I'm the, oops, I don't know how to use my computer. Uh, okay, my name is Mike Calhoun. I'm a principal engineer with Hint.io in Vancouver, Washington, which is, just so happens to be where I live as well. Uh, at Hint, we can help you with any number of programming needs from Rails upgrades to mobile apps to new Rails projects to React work. If that sounds like an area you want uh, help with, uh, talk to me or a couple of my coworkers are here. Ben and Jason are in the front. Um, we're all really cool. Uh, you can find me online at comeg 11 in places where you'd find people online. Uh, you know it's me by this picture of me on a historic train in a, a tropical climate without air conditioning, dying of heat stroke. Um, cool, and I also want to acknowledge Slides Carnival. This is the Laertes theme they released for free and it's probably the most professional slide deck I've ever had. Uh, I wanted something that had lots of red hues since that makes you think about errors allegedly. Um, they had a really cool one uh, for Chinese New Year. I was like, well, that's a little too whimsical. So we'll go something mildly professional for the first time ever. Um, that said, let's talk about errors. Uh, this talk was submitted to RailsConf uh, at the end of this month. Um, it's waitlisted uh, on the leveling up track, uh, which means that I could not do any work for it and would almost assuredly have to give it at the conference completely unprepared. Uh, or I could do some of the work and not have to give it. So I'm splitting the difference uh, uh, and I put the slides together um, but I haven't practiced a lot, so if it seems like I'm reading off of the slides directly, it's because I totally am doing that. Um, and I also wanted to call out that this was for the track leveling up. Uh, handling errors was something I ignored early on when getting into programming. Um, I figured, well, you know, you'll see an error, I'll get a bug report, we'll be done with it. Um, I gained, as I gained experience, I came to learn how important and useful it is. Um, but because this is leveling up, it may not be tailored to somebody with extensive experience, so it's kind of, you know, if, if it's boring, sorry, this Pete's in the back, help yourself. Um, so okay, so I want to start with this famous quote that I love, I think a lot of us like it. Um, and I think uh, it applies pretty well to conference talks too, because naming things is really hard. And I wrote the kind of abstract for it and couldn't figure out what to name it, so I went with this, and then I was like, wait, I gotta say this out loud at some point. Um, and so I was like, well, how does it sound? Is it condescending? Is it like a, how do you handle errors? Or is it like a, a kind of alarmist? How do we handle errors? Because we've certainly been in those circumstances. Uh, and I think in the end, it kind of landed on inquisitive, which is how do we handle errors? Um, well, what is an error? Uh, so I think there are some hallmarks of a good error. Uh, and it's a confluence of unexpected circumstances that cause the expected path uh, to deviate from its norms. Uh, this is a road where I have no idea what, what, what went wrong. It's in England somewhere, I think, but that round 40 up here. Um, or this picture, uh, which is from a city where I went to college, uh, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, uh, these are great examples. The tools, they had the tools to do the right thing, um, but something just went wrong, you know? Uh, Google the phrase yard sard sometimes. See what you come up with for that. It's Spelling sales shouldn't be that hard. Um, anyway, let's get a bit more specific. What are Rails, or what are errors in our Rails applications? And maybe more specifically Ruby. Uh, we've all seen this page, probably, or probably a newer version of it. Um, this is class, the classic page, uh, but what's happening under the hood? Uh, we have Ruby's exception hierarchy. Everything here is a subclass of exception, way up there at the top. Uh, and each subclass represents a different type of error or errors, there's several under each section. Uh, by default, everything is rescued for us uh, when we're using a rescue box from, from standard error over here. Um, standard error, rescue box. Uh, and that's for good reason. Uh, rescuing in other places on this hierarchy can have some unintentionally disruptive consequences. Uh, as an example, if you're rescuing from script error, it uh, means you're probably swallowing your syntax errors. So you won't see that you typed something wrong or you fat fingered a single quote where you meant a double quote. 
um, and then you'll spend hours trying to find it because you've hidden it. Um, my favorite is if you rescue signal exception uh, and you lose interrupt. So if you have your uh, app running locally and you try to control C, it just doesn't stop. You have to kill nine it eventually because you've blocked it from happening. Um, here is uh, from Rails. This is a list of the most common occurring Rails issues as reported by Rollbar in 2018. Um, this is from April 2018, I think. Um, with Rails in mind, we see uh, some new error groupings come into the hierarchy. Uh, these are action controller, active record. Uh, there's an action view in there. Uh, and some of these you've probably seen before, I, I definitely have in my projects. Um, invalid aut authenticity token, uh, you probably forgot to skip the authenticity step in your controller. Uh, timeout is a Ruby error, uh, something took longer than expected. Record not unique, you have some sort of constraint, uh, et cetera. Um, I still like on number two, the undefined method and uh, array for nil class. So you're, you have an undefined array that you're trying to assign something to or access as though it were an array. Uh, always fun. Um, so how do we handle errors? Back to this. Uh, now that we've talked through what errors are, let's go to the actual subject of the talk. How do you handle these errors? Or maybe more appropriately, how can we handle them? And, uh, and Ruby, I think our main tool for this is rescue. Uh, and this is a completely default example that you can drop pretty much anywhere you'd like uh, where there is code you're concerned with. Uh, and this is saying to perform whatever is in between begin and rescue. And if it works without issue, do nothing. But if something goes wrong between those two keywords, uh, it's going to perform whatever is between rescue and end. Yeah, how we handle if it breaks, perfect. I can't see the slides, so I keep glancing over, sorry. <laughs> Google Slides is not as good as I hoped. Uh, this is a slightly different version of the same code, except it's in a method, which is how I'll use it in the following examples. Uh, again, the code we want to rescue from is basically just replacing the begin with the method definition. Um, uh, beyond just rescuing, we can take a few additional actions. Uh, we have an else block that if the code doesn't make anything, doesn't have anything to rescue, it will run. Uh, think of it like an everything's okay alarm. Uh, then there is the ensure block, uh, and this is the code that will run no matter what happens, uh, what happens before it, error or not, it's running. And lastly, here are two similar code blocks. This is a little repetitive. Uh, by default, if we need to get to the error, we can assign it to a variable from rescue. Uh, this defaults to standard error, which is stated explicitly in the second block. Uh, and I wanted to show this because we can rescue anything that exists there. Uh, standard error is the default, but we could put it, uh, any more specific error in there. I mean, we could put exception in there if we wanted to and have all those problems I was talking about earlier. Uh, don't do that. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So let's proceed with exploring air handling in a sample project. Uh, and this is a super small, super simple example, uh, and that's probably a super small, super simple application, something we've all been asked to do before, and it's never that, it's always more complex. Um, and we're going to have an object called an object. Uh, it has one attribute we'll name foo, and it's only going to have four basic actions, create, edit, show, and update. Also, uh, you may be thinking to yourself that at this point, this, is, this seems pretty simplistic and contrived, and that's true, uh, but that's just a decision I made for this example, because it turns out writing bugs intentionally is a lot harder than writing them accidentally. Um, so we have our object class, nothing special to report, other than we're validating the uniqueness of one field. Validates the uniqueness of foo, yep. In the controller, there are common implementations for new, show, edit, index. We probably have seen them, just getting the thing by the ID, showing all of them. Uh, this is the create method, and I wanted to call out the if object save there, because um, we'll see something similar. Uh, did I go to the next slide? Yep, update. Um, on update, which is the same kind of principle. Um, and this is probably, can be considered the beginnings of error handling in honesty. Uh, we want to take an action, and if for whatever reason the action does not succeed, the item fails to save, uh, we give the user some information back, regardless of how little use it is. Uh, and we invite them to try again. And in some veins, this covers some of those more popular errors we see. A record that isn't valid because of a collision will get caught here. Uh, duplicate values of foo, for example. However, some errors won't get caught here. <coughs> Excuse me. If update doesn't retrieve a record for this ID, it'll throw an error. Uh, before it gets to the save attempt. 
Also, it may not be relevant here, but if this were an API controller, you'd be stuck with a client trying to interpret the HTML of a 500 page as his or her response you know, floundered. Um, again, this is a contrived example. I fully admit that. Um, that will not happen any application breaks. Uh, but what happens when we start to add more complexity? So I didn't, I don't do a lot of front end work, so there's our index page. Um, yeah, uh, this is currently our index page. It's just a list of the objects in a pattern of ID. Uh, ID, whatever's in the, the foo string and some actions we can take, edit, and show, all separated by those double colons that I think are pretty cool. Um, and I've been clicking around in the screenshot, that's why you've got the purple links. Um, and there's a new feature request we get. Uh, we've been asked to add a method that does some array stuff for our class and then outputs either uh, the first or second item of the array randomly on the show page of these items if foo is populated. That's kind of what these requirements on the side are here. Uh, and uh, one thing to call out, foo has to be unique, uh, but it does not have to be populated. So that's ID number eight here is empty. It's just four colons. Um, uh, so we can have that nil value at ID eight. Great. So we add the top code on the left hand side. That's array stuff, as the method is called. Uh, and it returns an array if foo is populated of foo and bar. Uh, and then we add that line to our show page. Uh, there's our view. Uh, welcome to our buggy app. Hello world, foo. So foo comes up randomly. Um, again, there are a million better ways to do this. I fully concede that. But of all the reasons, this is the only one uh, that when you click on the show button for the item we saw previously with foo empty, we get our empty uh, array error. Which I was excited. Congratulations, we've got uh, you know roll bars greatest hits of 2018, number two. Um, we've also created an error uh, that we can't protect from with those previously discussed uh, if save do this, otherwise do that errors uh, from updates. So let's clean this up a little bit. We can rescue this. <laughs> uh, so we introduce rescue. Uh, this handles our error. In this instance, we're rescuing very broadly from the default standard error, but uh, we won't see a 500 page, um, and there's no application halting crash, it's just our ugly show page uh, with an empty space where foo is and a note, or foo would be, excuse me, not is, uh, and a note that it was empty. So you see we're capturing it down there, that's the bottom left, we just added that little rescue. Um, okay, so with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, we just completely sw swallowed an issue in our Rails application and showed a relevant and informative error message to our user. Awesome, that's a lot more than we did with the, you know, if it doesn't save, just say try again. Um, but let's ruin this all by expanding scope just a little bit again. Um, just a little bit more scope expansion, scope creep, I swear it's the last time. Uh, and show where this aggressive error capture can bite us. Um, so of course we get some changes and now we're being told that if foo has the phrase added up, then array stuff needs to return an array of one and two and use array stuff to add one to a random select, randomly selected value of the array. Uh, I don't know why we would ever build this application, but we're doing it. So that's right here, we're returning it if that equals one and two, otherwise we're going back to our default if it's present. Uh, we're still rescuing if foo is empty. Um, so we make these changes. Uh, and under that, user array stuff uh, with a rescue. Okay, sorry, I'm reading my slides while I skipped ahead. Again, we're implementing this poorly and we're not writing tests, so all bets are off, but we can look at our index page. Okay, we've got added up now, I went full screen for this. So uh, added up now is ID number nine after our empty array. Uh, everything looks good, let's see how the code works. We go to ID nine first, great. Welcome to buggy app, there, there's added up, that's what was in foo, it looks like we got two randomly. Uh, we added one to it, we got three. And then this is where foo was empty, uh, foo was empty and it's not represented, great. Uh, and then we go to the default, the easiest case that has always worked, and it's not working anymore. Uh, we have hello world, so foo has something in it, but we're being told that it was empty. Okay, what happened? Uh, revisiting our old code, we see it now a new error is being rescued from our initial expected outcome. Uh, if we weren't rescuing anything or everything, rescuing everything under a standard error, we'd hit an error that was no implicit conversion of integer into string. We're getting foo and bar as our array, and then we're trying to add one to one of those, which can't add one to foo or bar, that's crazy. Um, 
if we weren't rescuing any, yeah, uh, but knowledge not lost, we can handle things differently. So we expand it a little bit. Uh, we do this method that we're expecting to do. Um, we won't catch the things we know to expect and let's handle them how we want to. Uh, what this does is not aggressively swallow errors we probably need transparency into. Um, so we're rescuing the type error uh, for if we're trying to add one to a string and then we log it or something, I don't know. Uh, and then otherwise we go back to our default case if uh, foo is empty where our, our path for what we do on that error is more defined. Uh, again, this is contrived. Uh, I was recently working on a, uh, an external service integration where I was using rescue from standard error. And what happened was that occasionally the external API would time out or experience a 500 or a DNS issue. And these were getting logged, uh, but the errors were getting swallowed. So I had no idea what was happening. I was just getting dropped API requests. Um, not so much that you'd notice, but enough that it's a problem. Um, and that is an issue where aggressive error swallowing kind of come back, came back to bite me. Um, so it can happen, even in, in contrived examples. Um, so that said, let's scope creep a little bit more. And this will be the last bit of it, I swear, because I'm already at 17 minutes. Uh, for this contrived example, uh, it's going to be kind of the most complicated. Uh, but we find out that all this work we've done is great, and there's one last wrinkle. Um, the objects need to be hierarchical to themselves, uh, so they have children. So we'll add a parent ID field and say they have one, an object, and belong to an object. I should have named this something different. Uh, we'll see this object on the show page in the form of child ID. Let's say like I, I have a parent and its foo is this, I have a child, its foo is this. Um, but some of these objects cannot be children. Uh, so we're gonna add a can be child Boolean to our model. <clears throat> and uh, so attempting to save one should raise an error uh, that we want to see a message for. That's if we assign it a child ID, or if we assign it a parent ID, excuse me, uh, and, but it has can be child set to false. That should raise an error. Um, also, we found out from our IT team uh, that uh, they'll be making random changes to the database that will exist outside of our application logic. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, it happens more often than you think, I swear. Uh, and so last things first, we need a validation that says some records that are not allowed to be children cannot be saved as such. And since we're on this error raising kick, let's just keep on it. Uh, we add this validation to our model. Um, I'm gonna walk over here and kind of point to things. Uh, so this is a, 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 a custom error we're gonna raise. We're gonna put this in errors, parent error, and it's not really gonna do either. We're pretty much just gonna let it all deal with standard error, but we're gonna add this to the class because our exception case here is a little outside of our normal realm of error raising. We're gonna validate that it can be a child, uh, and this is our little method to do that. If ID, if an object ID is present and can be child equals false, that means we're trying to give it a parent ID, but it can't be a child, it's gonna raise this error. Uh, and it says with our message, this object cannot be a child. Um, no, couple of seconds, sorry here. Uh, both of these, the concerns are true, save. Uh, so we are now stopping errant records from being saved uh, with an error that's in standard error now, but something custom to our unique case. So let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna make hello world no exclamation, record number three, the parent of hello world with an exclamation, uh, ID number one, uh, that's the parent. Uh, the three is the parent, two, one, one is the child. Um, so when we look at one's show page, we see, welcome to Buggy App, hello world. Uh, my parents foo is hello world, checks out. Let's look at number three, hello world, welcome to Buggy App, my child's foo is hello world, exclamation. Also great, so we're good, high fives all around. Let's go to bed, we did a good job, until we get a phone call at 2 a.m. And here we are with this page. Um, and we go to look at this locally and we get this error that something broke. And what happened? Looking at this error message, we have to su suspend some disbelief uh, since again, writing bugs on purpose as part of a narrative is hard. Here it doesn't make sense that I'd be checking for the parent ID and not the parent itself, which Rails would kind of handle for us. Uh, but I'm trying to advocate for rescue's use in healthy applications, so I have to beg the question a little bit. Um, anyway, back to our suspension of disbelief. Uh, remember, 
back to our scope creep conversation, that thing about how people will be modifying the database outside of our application logic looks like it happened, and the, the object with ID three was deleted, uh, which means that we have an object that says, my parent ID is three, three is not a record, here we are. Um, but we're savvy error handlers, we can fix this too. And we do. Uh, this does a few things. Uh, firstly, we are going to override the active record association for our class. If there's a parent ID and the record loads, we're not going to take any action. Uh, but if there is an ID that the record isn't found, uh, find will raise an active record, record not found error. So we rescue that and return a message in an open struct that basically serves as kind of a null object, so foo will respond to it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the null objects pattern, uh, I would love to talk more about it. That's outside the scope of this. Um, so find me, shoot me a line, let's talk. Um, and lastly, there is an ensure block, uh, and this is code that will be executed no matter what the circumstance, error or not. And here we're going to say to ensure that the ID is removed if that record is nil. So we're gonna kind of fix our error for ourselves, honestly. Um, and so a few refreshes of our broken app and we see this progression. And I, I did this on my computer last night, like 1 a.m., I was pretty stoked about this. Uh, my parents' foo is no longer a record, that needs to be deleted, it's okay. It's identified the problem, future users won't see it. It's actually already fixed as of rendering this page. We didn't even have to do this ridiculous part of showing it, but still wanted to because it's satisfying. Uh, and then on the subsequent refresh, it's gone. Everything's functioning as normal, so you know, ooh, that's not good. That's supposed to be the ship it icon. Okay, I'll fix that later. Uh, so you know, ship it. It's great, we did it. Uh, it's a, yeah, thank you, I heard it, you get the point. Uh, <laughs> um, so this talk was intended for 40 minutes. I'm at 23, so I'm gonna power through. I cut off the last half of this. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna breeze through a few things really quickly here to talk about in broad strokes, uh, the important concepts rather than leverage our contrived app to address these topics. Um, <clears throat> where the narrative could go is that this company that relies on an object gets new technical leadership and decided uh, they need to support a public IPA, API. Um, how do you boil up meaningful error messages to these users and return them in API responses? Thinking back to our uh, can't be a child example, our controllers can send back the error with a 400 bad request and populate the custom error messages from our object with something akin to what you're seeing on the top right? Yeah, cool. Um, you know, we're just boiling up the error messages that we were, we were generating ourselves. We can put those in our responses if we rescue and instead of like hand, having it halt and crash, uh, just send the error message back and be polite about it. Um, testing, testing is really important. Uh, and a word about testing, which is that I am very regretful to kind of breeze through it. Uh, but test when you expect to raise exceptions, test what those exceptions are, test how they're handled. Uh, in this case, we had the exception uh, that save would fail, so that's another test case. Uh, in this circumstance where there was an invalid parent ID on an object, we could test that the error is raised, that the message was returned indicating it had been caught, and a third test indicating that the record had been corrected uh, for the insurer block. Um, this is just a quick overview. It's not anything particularly crazy. We're just going to expect that errors get raised because they will get raised. And when we identify them, we know we're doing it intentionally, we can test for it to occur. Um, so in summary, uh, our applications are going to have to deal with the unexpected, but we have some useful tools to handle those and gracefully degrade user experience while also providing entry points to add more useful insight. And I, when I say that, I'm meaning like we can add logging so we know how frequently errors are occurring. We can add some kind of informational value to these errors as they occur. Um, when trying to deal with issues preemptively, uh, don't cast a wide net because you can. Uh, we don't make laws, we, in this country we don't make laws by saying everything is illegal and then legalizing things as they come up. Uh, we actually do the reverse. So don't rescue everything. Only rescue them as you experience them or know them to occur. Um, at the end of the day, fortune favors the prepared. Uh, where you think things can break and a rescue will do, use it. Uh, where things break when building and testing, rescue. When a bug is exposed in production, rescue. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Sorry for the abrupt ending. Thanks for listening. If there's time for questions, great. Otherwise, you can ask uh, me uh, or via comeg 11 and I will tell you my email if I'm asked. I'm reluctant to put it on a slide. So, yeah, the end.
26 minutes, that's not bad. I'll take the mic off if no one has any questions. Everybody seems anxious to get out of here. Not that I am, I'm happy to ask him, I swear. Don. Thank you.